I was in the United States. I got a job offer in Vientiane, Lao. And I had another job offer in uh, Hanoi, Hanoi, Vietnam. And uh, for me, the difference between decided between the two countries was I looked at a YouTube video of Hanoi and it just looked too busy for me to start at 26 years old. So I decided I'd go to Vientiane, Lao because this is the population was about six, seven hundred thousand people. I thought that would be a good place to start um, in Southeast Asia. And to be honest, I didn't even know where Lao was on a map. I thought it was an island somewhere. It sounds like an island name. Then I looked and it was smack dab right in the middle of Southeast Asia. And I said, that might be a good place to start so I can travel to other places in Southeast Asia. So I chose, uh, I chose Vientiane, Lao. That's where the story starts. It feels like one of those places that doesn't feel like a house in America. You know, we live in, you know, uh, you know, all these manufactured homes. But when you come here to Asia, this house felt like it had a little bit of character to it, you know. British expat, he was probably at 80, 81, 82, and this is the house that I was gonna live. He drove his bicycle around. I lived next to a temple, so you could hear the Buddhist chants in the morning, even before bed. And it was a little bit different to be used to that, but I did. But it added, even all that, let me tell you, this is the most important part before the story starts. It added to the house. Living in that bedroom, it was old, wooden, chant of the Buddhist. It just felt all the character, it just came together like it was an old place to live. It was an old place to live. I had gone to bed uh, every night when I had lived there, and uh, there was always some sorts of sort of uneasiness because it was outside of my comfort realm of living inside the United States in a comforting bed with your family or someone nearby. Now I'm halfway around the world and I'm sleeping in a terrible bed that doesn't, you know, in a room that I don't know, in a house that I don't know where is on the map, in a country that I have barely visited for a few hours. So I went to bed one night and uh, I think as, as we would say, I finally got comfortable where I can go to sleep. And I went to sleep. And uh, one night I woke up just out of the blue, just boom, my eyes were open. And if you all know, when you wake up, I think it's almost a gradual experience. You open your eyes, you kind of ease into what's going on, okay, check your phone, what time it is. No, this time was different than I've ever woken up. I woke up, I was wide awake, full of energy. And when I, when I woke up, I was sleeping on my side, on my, on my right side, as you can say, on my right shoulder facing the wall. And I woke up, and when I opened my eyes, automatically, I was in, a, 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 I, I can't even, I want to try and categorize, categorize it, but I don't think I can, but it was as close as I can to say it was complete terror. I woke up as well. I woke up. No, no, I just woke up feeling the most scared that I've ever felt in my life. And I was wide awake. You know, I wasn't a, a was sleep waking up to, you know, get, I was wide awake in a complete terror. And I'm laying on my side and I can tell something is absolutely wrong. It is really wrong. And, and I'm trying to comprehend within the few seconds that I wake up and what's going on. What, what's wrong? I, f I feel as I try to make sense of what's going on, I feel an impression on my bed, behind my back. There's an impression on my bed. There's something there behind you. There's something sitting on my bed, right behind me. Um, as this thing was sitting behind my bed, now I'm gonna try and make sense of turning around, trying to figure out what is sitting on it? Is it one of these animals that are sitting in the house? Did you move? I couldn't, I couldn't move. Paralyzed. So I tried to turn around, but my body could not move. I tried to, I wanted to, I, in my mind, I wanted so bad just to turn around and see what was sitting behind me on was my bed. Was it fear that was keeping you still? Or something else? Was you, was, was you, uh... It was supernatural. 
Okay, so some of them. Absolutely. I couldn't move. But hear this, hear this. I couldn't move to see what was behind me, but I could see what was behind me. That's the weird part. I wanted to see what was behind me, but I could, but I couldn't turn. But in my in my imagination, in my brain, I could see what what was behind me. I could see it. So what did you imagine was behind you? I didn't imagine it, and I don't. I want. I don't. I don't. I don't, don't, don't want to see it. what I saw in my head. What I couldn't see was a, a small black demon sitting behind me on the bed you know like these gargoyles that are on the you know on the little you know nerd these, these gargoyles there was a small black gargoyle demon sitting behind me on the bed like a gothic christian church it was sitting on it was sitting behind me and the amount of terror that i felt that i just wanted to turn around and just make sense of it you know if i could see it okay then it's there but i couldn't turn around <laughs> but I could still see what was there. What's the scariest, what was the ultimate terror for me? And you said something dark, very, very dark. It was, you couldn't see a face or anything. It was just a dark, small demon sitting on my bed right behind me. So here's, here's where uh, it gets a little bit twisted. So as I am in fear, this demon or whatever sitting behind me in the bed starts trying to possess me through my back. Through my back that was turned. It was it was starting to enter my back and I could feel it entering my back. I felt it. And it was not a good feeling. You felt this kind of uh, feeling inside you like there's something foreign, there's something, fo there's something foreign trying to enter my body and there's nothing that you can do about it. It's a helpless feeling. And if it's something physical, like someone in a bar, you can at least push them off. You can at least, you can, but something spiritual and something for the first time, I didn't know how to deal with it. And it was entering this, this demon was entering me through my back and I could feel it. And the only thing that I could tell myself, I didn't know how to deal with it. I wanted to scream out so bad, but I couldn't scream. I couldn't scream. I tried so hard to scream, but only whisper came out. And uh, it, it was started entering my back. And I told the demon in my own head, without screaming out or anything, I remember. I remember it fluidly because it was, you know, I remember. And I said, you cannot enter my body. I am stronger than you. You do not belong here. This is my body. Get out. Those are my thoughts. As I started saying that, the last tail part about this is my body, this demon exited my body and I could feel it tearing out of me and coming in still sitting on the bed. And I was still, I was still paralyzed with fright because of what just happened. Did you have any like spiritual thoughts? Were you thinking any Christian thoughts or anything like that? Was in in like, an instance like that, you in an instance like that, I mean, I think it goes beyond spirituality. It's actually, it's actually, it's, cool, it, but it's I know, I think it actually is all in your, it's all in your mind. Cause your body's frozen. It's all whatever you can do in these times in your mind. And uh, so when I told this theme, theme, demonic, uh, entity it cannot enter my body it sucked out of my back my back and that's the weirdest part people you know you watch movies and things enter through you know your body and stuff this thing tried to enter me through my back while my back was turned it tried to catch me in a very vulnerable position which is interesting so it came out of me and it was sitting there on my bed again and i could still feel the indenture and this is where my, my fright was at my most because I just felt something I never felt. And then, uh, it is not gonna go on forever, but this is the last time it happened. It tried to, it tried to enter me through my back again. 
try to try to possess me. One final push. It tried to it tried to it tried to possess me again, and I felt I felt this uh, demonic uh, spirit or you know demonic entity try to enter me through my back again. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. It is one of the most. Uh, I can't even describe the feeling of something like that trying to come inside your body because you're a physical person and this spiritual entity is trying to enter your body. It's indescribable. I, 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 do, I wish I could put it into words, but I really can't. But you beat it, Jobs. How did you beat it? How did you... So again, when it tried to enter my body again, it tried to come inside my body, my back, through my back again, I was facing the other way. I'm trying to scream, but every time I try to scream, I go, <gasps> And I was, I never try and screamed as loud as I tried during that period. I can still, every time I've never tried to scream, like I tried to scream that night and I couldn't scream. And it tried to enter my body again. And the only words that I could still say that I could defend myself was, this is my body. You cannot enter. I am in control. This is my body. And then, as, and it's and it's not even saying it. It's saying it within your mind, and you're clutched. Your eyes, your eyes are clutched. Your mouth is clutched. You're fighting. You're fighting something that isn't there. That's the worst part about it. You're fighting something that isn't there. And you don't know how to fight it. But the best thing that you can do is just is just try and do what you can. And that's what I did with my mind. I told it that this is my body and you can't come in there. But then the whole thing broke up. It broke up like a, like a mist and, um, and it was gone. So I wake up the next morning and uh, I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely terrified of what just happened the night before. Like I'm literally in tears. I'm so scared. I'm like, a demon. I know that like, and you know, a lot of people might chalk it up as a, gene, a dream. Someone might chalk it up as, you know, no, when I woke up the next morning, I knew this was real. I felt it. I felt it. I experienced it, and it was not a dream. I've had many dreams, but this was not a dream. So I went to school the next day. I knew one of my coworkers was a Filipino pastor, and I went to him, and I've never been religious in my life, but the next morning I said, I need to find Jesus. And the old guy, remember I told you the old guy, the backstory, the fourth story, I go home to that old guy and uh, I tell him, I said, dude, you wouldn't make, you wouldn't believe what happened last night. I, I'm pretty sure I got, I'm pretty sure I got possessed by a demon. And I feel, I, I'm very scared. I went today to school to talk to a priest because I want to find Jesus. I'm absolutely terrified. Um, and the guy said, wait, what? What are you talking about? I said, this is what happened. And he said, well, you know, he was a British guy. You know, British, they have just the most driest humor, right? He goes, wow, I guess this isn't a good time to tell you last night that uh, I found a dead kitten outside your door last night.